Hello and welcome to episode five of the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, hashtag Barclay Street, brought to you by our dear friends, our lovely friends at Mercedes-Benz Vans. A uh, bit of a different kind of vibe to today's podcast, I think would be fair to say. A bit of a storm sort of surrounding the footy club and, and one of our very own this week. Um, and it's always a pleasure to speak to my co-host, the skipper Marcus Bontempelli. But I'm tipping there might just be, yeah, a, a touch of um, a touch of heaviness or melancholy with him today. But he's here to explain how he feels himself. Marcus Bont, welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclays Street, mate. Bobby, mate, it's it is great to be back with you again. As always, I always look forward to um to our Barclay Street hashtag Barclay Street. I love the sound of hashtag Barclay Street. It just rolls, and it's <laughs> it does, um, actually, I love when yeah. you say it. I love when you say it too. But um it, yeah, as you mentioned, clearly it's been a, a an, an eventful couple of days with everything that that transpired late last week with with Lockie, um, and obviously it's played out pretty publicly. So. Um, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm here to probably talk to some of it um, with regard to obviously the fact that there's still a fair bit sort of playing out from a legal standpoint. Um, so there's only probably certain elements that we, we know we can touch on. But um, yeah, not 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 ideal, absolutely. Um, but, you know, life throws you up these um, circumstances at times and, um, you know, we've all just got to do our best to, to navigate our way through them. So we can... Attack this in any any number of different ways, but I think, and you've even alluded to it there. There's there's a really serious legal side to it. There's police involved. There's lawyers, managers. Um, you know, when the president and CEO are uh, heavily involved in a meet, you know, a press conference from his from his house yesterday. So things things are pretty serious. I understand you. You know, you might be a little bit restricted in what you can say, but just from a personal toll um you're a young captain how, how, how have you found the last few days it must be a steep learning but is it is it taken it out of you as well uh yeah I'd, I'd say that's fair i've definitely felt um you know the, the um the feelings of, of uh, fatigue definitely when you when you feel like you're dealing with, with something probably as serious and as the at the level that, that this one is and I think when you consider, um, obviously, it's only my first sort of season as, as captain of the football club. Um, it's, you know, baptism of fire in a sense with, you know, unfortunately how we started round one. Then obviously we, we move into this um, isolation, COVID sort of pandemic. And, and now we deal with a player who's um, clearly made, you know, some really poor decisions um, while he's sort of meant to be isolating. Um, and obviously that's impacting sort of all of us within the football club. So, um, certainly it, it, it has waned on me a little bit, but I feel like I'll learn a fair bit out of these, these past few days and these situations that, that will, um, you know, hopefully help me sort of in the long run as, as being a better leader um, and the best leader I can be for the football club. Get, get ready here for a really, a really clumsy kind of metaphor, Okay. But I'm, I was kind of okay. thinking about. I was kind there of thinking go. about. You're good. You're because, good for these. You are well, good for this. Well, this is this might be my masterpiece in terms of real clumsy metaphors. But well, I was thinking. I was thinking about you this week, um, and I was and I was reflecting on exactly what you've just said. So you, you've, you're a young captain, played one game in front of no crowd, and we get absolutely thumped then the season's put on hold. So you've got that to yeah, sort right. of do yep. on. Yeah. So then, we, when, then we go into lockdown, which is... Mm, yep. I, don't know how, I don't know how many captains there's Check. been of the uh, yep. Western Bulldogs Footscray Footy Club, but none of them, and none of them have got any reference point for you. <laughs> if EJ was still around, he got nothing for nope. you. He doesn't know. Charlie, he doesn't know. Brad Johnson, <laughs> no idea. Scotty Wind, bup up. And then, and then we have this, um, and then we have the, the the situation with your with your vice captain in lock-in. So you know, splashed over the front page, and it's um, mm. whichever way you kind of look at it, it's a, you know, it's a it's a bit of a mess. And I was kind of thinking that in terms of just specifically yeah. your captaincy, it's a bit like um, it's a bit like travelling with your girlfriend. So the holiday might be a three-month holiday, but the relationship 
you're backpacking around Europe or America. That relationship might be a three month holiday, but the relationship is about six years. So I think although you've been captain yep. in your own right for one game, you're more like a 150 game captain, I reckon, after this whole thing is <laughs> this whole sort of storm blows over. How, how, how clumsy is it and how sort of accurate do you reckon that is? No, I reckon I reckon that's well, ultimately very clumsy, which is true to form. So I, you know, well done there because you've, you've nailed it, um, which is all, which is always great. And sec secondly, it, it is. Um, I mean, I will find out in time, I guess what what this sort of means for me. But immediately as I'm sort of going through it, and then always trying to reflect on each sort of decision that I'm making, each sort of touch point that I sort of need to go through. Um, I think I am learning as, as I go through it. Um, and clearly we're not um, out of the woods just yet from obviously everything else perspective, as well as, you know, the situation with Lockie and, um, and the other boys. But I'm feeling like this will be something that I'll obviously be able to reflect on for, for quite a while. And it will, it will hold me in better stead to deal with hopefully um, not as, you know, not a similar circumstances down the track, but definitely overall as a person, as a leader. So, um, yeah. you know, that, that's the thing I've said to the, to the group that there are always things you can learn from probably really any situation, whether you're directly involved or not. Um, and that's, that's just being able to weigh up um, different things and then learn different elements from situations that, that don't necessarily involve you. Yeah. Um, have you been in touch with, with Lockie? I have, I have. And then Lockie, the thing with Lockie is he and I are pretty close mates as well and have been for, for a number of years since, really since I joined the football club, but particularly throughout the last couple of years with his, with his growth from a, from a leadership point of view. And I think in these early stages, I've tried to really just support him as best that I can while he's going through these, these challenging sort of circumstances. Um, but also, you know, ultimately, you know, pretty disappointed in, in sort of his actions and behaviours that, that have really, um, you know, impacted a lot of different people. So, and he knows that. He knows where I, where I stand with it. He knows what, um, from a leadership point of view, the example that you've got to, got to set. And this is, um, this is a, you know, quite a substantial miss when it comes to that, that point of view. How difficult is it? Um, or is it too early, but to balance these two things. So he's, you know, he's a good friend of yours. He's your, he's your vice captain. Um, so there's, there's an element of care because, you know, for, for all of his mistakes, you know, it's a, the, the public glare and the humiliation, yeah. all those things. That, that's, that's, that's something that's very real. So you've got to support, you've got to support yep. your team. But, but on the other hand, and, and you described it as, you know, pretty disappointed mm. um how, how do you how do you kind of balance those two things when you you know when the time comes when you you know you'll, you'll sit down with them and 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 have it out i suppose yeah well i think the the, the um you know the support has to be that the priority i guess when you consider um you know well-being and potentially um you know mental health and, and state of mind within the current sort of predicament and, and situation and just from a a personal point of view, like I think if I was in his position, if you, you know, you, you'd, you'd hope you'd get the, the support you, you can to, to get through this, but at the same time, full willingly knowing how people would feel about your actions and, and behaviours. And, um, and like I said, he, he understands and you, you can clearly tell from his, um, you know, his statements yesterday and his obvious, you know, choice to, to stand down from the vice captaincy position that he, he understands the magnitude of, of his actions. And it's yeah. not something that, that you can easily atone for. I'll, I'll probably say that, that it's going to be something that over time um, he has to, to work through. And then that's probably what I'll, I'll mostly be, be guiding him on is, is how he can do that and how, um, you know, is essentially he can... Is he that can, the trust it is. It's a yeah. big one, mate. And you, you know, as a you know a footballer, obviously yourself, but a, a captain and within the, the the team and the club, that's something that takes a lot of time to to build up and to earn. But it can also be be lost in sort of one sort of foul swoop. And and clearly, um, that that's the case that we that we sort of are in at the minute is that he's got to, um, you know, work out and and sort of commit to to you know doing his best to earn that back. And it will take some time, but he will get there. And I'll, I'll support him. Um, every way that I can in doing that um, because um, his growth over the, the last couple of years has been quite substantial when it comes to leadership. Um, but like I said, it only takes 
one action or behaviour to sort of for that to sort of be reduced to, to unfortunately the levels that it has been. Um, just from the outside, it, it seemed like um, you know when when the news dropped, there was quite a few elements to it. Um, n- none of them very good. I mean, we can't we can't dress it up. It was a, there was a lot of you know seemingly a lot of you know errors of judgment. I don't think you know. I think we, we've harped on that enough. We we know about that detail, but the the element of um, Bailey and Billy as well in being sort of involved yeah. in it. How much did that sort of play on your mind in the you know in the early stages of just ascertaining you know how they'd become involved? Yeah, well, I think my early um, inclinations and the things that I did were basically just trying to check that everyone was okay. Um, and then <clears throat> from there, you know, once you'd sort of, you know, worked out that, that no one was really hurt and everyone was, was okay as a result of, of what had transpired, your next thing is, well, how do you get them the support that they need in, in the short term? Um, and it's, it's just really unfortunate, to be honest, but clearly Lockie at the same time has, you know, made decisions that have then involved, um, you know, two of his other teammates and, and our, you know, and our teammates, which... Um, really just isn't isn't great um, to be totally honest with you because then you know things like these just then the the amount of people that become involved just continues to increase and it starts to impact obviously a lot of people and that's not just the players the club the football community but then there's families of people that that, that are also you know affected by it so uh, you just you know there's so much so much you know, room for it to, to, to influence other people that you're just trying to minimise that and trying to support those people through, throughout these times. Um, so, I mean, there's a, like you said, there's, a, there's always a balance with, with things like these that, um, you know, support and help players work through it that are directly involved. But then the greater, you know, thing is also then the rest of the group and how you, you manage yeah. their um, mood and emotions and feelings through it and, um, and make sure they understand um, sort of what's happening and from their perspective how we can learn from it and what's acceptable and what's not um, so that's been the other priority for me is to make sure the group is is definitely understanding of you know what we want to stand for and what we do um, in those situations so it's a pretty significant um, uh, punishment handed down four games five thousand dollar fine you know a big fine you know suspended and I'm sure and then there's some other legality stuff that I think, you know, Lockie's still having to work his way through. But I, I was on radio yesterday and, you know, this news, you know, the, the news comes through of, of, of the punishment and you get these polar opposite views. Some people saying that um, it's too much and then the other end saying it's not enough. And But one, one, one message came through on, at, on the radio station of that uh, handing back the vice captaincy shouldn't even be included in you know this this package for want of a better term of of this punishment i I, that sort of jarred with me of like Mm. it's a pretty big deal how how do you kind of do you give that a fair bit of weight of how much that would have hurt Lockie to hand that back yeah i I think it, it really would have and i think that over over time as you journey through your career um you do like you, you do give more and more thought to, to leadership as I think you become, um, you know, accustomed to the, the game and you feel like you're, you're, you know, comfortable at the level. Then you start to look a bit of, of other ways that you can impact and influence on, on a greater level. And then Lockie had really progressed in, in that sense to earn the, the vice captaincy position throughout his, his last couple of years. And um, that's why it's, it's sad because it, it, it's disappointing because it you know it stunts his growth as a as a person as a as a footballer, but um, it is such a hefty you know, obviously punishment. But from an emotional point of view, it would have really stung. Um, and yeah, you can't sort of limit how he might have you know how that might have felt from his perspective to have done that. Um, but yeah, ultimately you know we've got to still continue to to work out ways and support him in trying to get you know back to that point. Um, albeit not knowing, you know, how long that might might take. So part of leadership is to to deal with, um, you know, the crisis or the storm at the time, but also to have a vision for the future. Is it? Do you think it's? Do you think it's possible that despite Lockie, you know, stepping away and handing back the vice captaincy, that, that this gives him an opportunity to become become a leader and 
an even an even greater leader than perhaps he, he could have been throughout it does, just sort of learning from all of this it does it certainly does um it can be the catalyst for um you know potentially Lockie's um you know uh, opening up of his I guess his own sphere it's understanding you know how his actions obviously influence others but it could be could be the thing that that, that does hopefully propel him into becoming you know one of the best you know hopefully um leaders of this football club um but right at this minute he's still got a little bit to work through but um i think you and i both know and have seen over the course of you know our journeys and throughout the afl's history is that people who who have to suffer through circumstances like this may come out the other side and hopefully will come out the other side better people and um better leaders so you know that's that's the thing we almost expect as a football club that, that he can do that so um it yeah. certainly can be something for him that that means a lot for him in the long run well you certainly got your work cut out for you mate and um you know lucky's got a bit of a journey ahead of him but um i know both of you well enough i know that footy club well enough to know you guys will get through it and um and find uh find the light through all of that can we just reflect for a moment? So this time last week, we were welcoming Luke Darcy to the footy club. He's going to join the board. And that's Big Darcy. A bit of a quiet time at the footy club and just sort yeah. of cruise into it. And then yep. he that, us. That, that day, that Oof. day, he's straight into the frying pan. Talk about, you know, baptism of, of fire from, from my perspective. Couldn't even get through one day, Darcy, before... <laughs> Something happened that he you know, had to try and deal with. So you can only totally sort of sympathy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. I feel, I feel I feel for him, and he's had to um, obviously deal with deal with probably talking to it as well, like like yourself yeah. being a bulldogs person, um, you know, in the media and and um, you know other things. But I guess that's what we do at football clubs, like you mentioned before. Um, you know, sometimes you got to get through some choppy waters at times, but, um, you know, we're all in it together. And the overall thing is, you know, we're all, you know, humans at the end of the day, end of the day mistakes are going to be made. Um, and our football club has always been good at, you know, wrapping our arms around people in, in the time of need, but, you know, helping us support them through it. I've always said to you that with footy clubs, we're like, we're like families, but we ain't the Brady yep. Bunch. We can have a bit nah. of a squabble every now and then. Uh, can happen. Let's change, yep. let's change topic completely. Um, yep. Did you get as swept up and excited about the Chicago Bulls documentary as I did? How good. How good. I like, yeah, I was um, sort of eagerly waiting for it to, to release. Um, and I love that it's been dropped in two episode um, yeah. sort of bunches because it's like you get the – it then – Obviously, you get two hits of really quality mm. access, um, but the, it sort of left you on a obviously a cliffhanger with that sort of second episode. Um, so I don't know if everyone's watched it, so we won't spoil the details in it. But um, mm. I thought it was great. Oh, and the thing for me, and you're probably going to be potentially a little bit different, being a, a obviously only a little bit older um, hey. and a little, just a just a smidge, um, is that I never really like, you know, when we talk about the GOAT conversation and, you know, it's, you know, obviously Michael Jordan and most often LeBron is I've uh -huh. clearly grown up. Oh, I know. Look at you. I've clearly grown up in a time where LeBron is all I've probably seen and heard. And this for me feels like I might be able to balance out the um, perspective with regard to Michael Jordan. And that's something I'm looking forward to because I wouldn't have watched games or tape or vision of him as much as I have LeBron. So that's one thing I'm like, and already I'm like, oof, okay, yeah. And I, I get it more. Obviously knowing who he was and you know the, the, the weight that his name carries, but I'm already like, uh-oh, <laughs> LeBron's in I trouble. Think, I think it's going to be a tough little stretch for, for those youngsters like yourself holding on to this LeBron being, being <laughs> the greatest of all time. I I sat down the other night. Like I was instantly, as soon as it started, I was yep. I was 14 years old again. And, mm. and for reasons that I can't really explain, as soon as it's I, I went to my room and I mm. Yes. Bang. Yep. I watched in the lounge room. Yep. And just put them on and even shush Justine a couple of times in the first two minutes. Yeah. I was like, bup, 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 bup. <laughs> it must have felt nice lacing them up, that's for sure. And for an inkling, you just thought, oh, imagine, imagine, you know, what it, what life would have been like for him, especially in those early stages. But um, 
the part the part that I found amazing and the confidence that I you know obviously knew he had confidence, but as a young person when he was yeah. first drafted, and I think he'd had an he had an injury and they were basically sitting him and not letting him play. And I think it was for a substantial period. He's like, no, nah, I'm going to go. You know, let me go back to school and go back to college. And secretly, he just started upping his minutes wow. and playing. Yeah. And I was like, that's another level of understanding yeah. and motivation, which um, I never really probably appreciated or knew an example of. Yeah, I can't wait to check in with you every. Um, so it's every every uh, Tuesday, I think, is it that the yeah. episode drop? I, I can't wait just to check in with you because it was. I found a little twinge of like. Oh, like I, I wish I, I wish I was still playing to a degree mm. because he has that level. Of, like it, it kind of inspiring, and to be able yeah. to have a little outlet, and, and yeah. you guys will get to do that. And I, I think you will. I think just um, delving into his character, which this documentary yeah. will do, and that team, I think you, you're going to be able to draw lots of different things. And yeah, and you know, me going for a jog with the dog, I can't really. Apparently, that sort of that, that sort of. But you can you can still move. You can grab the grab the rock and just bit of you know one on none. <laughs> it's just at the hoop and just pretend. That's just mate, pretend that's you're a kid again. Okay, pretend you're a kid you again. Just okay. imagination okay. and just close your eyes and you know don't watch yeah. you know the ball because it will most more than often probably you know Clang. clank or. <laughs> but just close um, your eyes and embrace it. Well, it's been a um, it's been a different kind of podcast today, mate. And um, had to ask you some tough questions there. And I know it's never comfortable to talk about one of your teammates, particularly in these sort of incidents. Um, but I think it's come through loud and clear that not only you know you know the the care you've got for him, but also the footy club and and he's he down mate. So you know we we acknowledge the mistakes he's made, but. Um, you know, we put put our arms around him, and like any good footy club, we circle the wagons and, and now get on with it. But can I ask you about how's Maya? How's the dog? Maya, yeah, she's going. She's going well. I started, you know, with all the diaries that are getting written at the minute, and you know, I don't know one of my teammates and his um, brother and sister have started, you know, the Dunkley Diaries. I thought, oh, maybe oh, there's no. a, mate, yeah, go out there. Anyway, so I thought, oh, maybe there's an opportunity for the Puppy Diaries. So um, that's a gag. I, I won't be documenting every day. But, I, you know, the transition from, oh, this, how cute is this? This is awesome to, uh oh. Reality. She's, she's, yeah, yeah, reality kicked in after a couple of days when I couldn't sort of get her to settle and go to sleep and, the constant, you know, poos and wheeze everywhere, mate, as you'd as you know. Uh, but oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. She's great. Um, you know, she's plenty of fun and pretty active being a Kelpie. Um, yeah. But, yeah, she's certainly, we're certainly, you know, she's testing me. Um, but I'm sure that'll carry on for quite a bit longer. So we're only in the, in the early stages, but all going well so far. Okay, well, that's good. Well, we've done some, some heavy lifting um, today. I think next next week there'll be a, a little bit more light, a little bit more levity to the podcast. But sometimes, mm. um, as my mum often says, sometimes you just got to shoot the shit. So we had to do, we had to do a bit of that today. Um, we did. Can we, we shot it. Te- can we just tease next week? So I, 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 we had this idea, didn't we, of whilst we're in this sort of um, isolation slowdown phase, and there's not much footy to, well, there's no footy. Let's be honest. Mm, there's no, correct. Correct. No, yep. nothing. There's no it's nothing. Accurate. <laughs> but we we thought, what if we picked up a a bulldog's moment, and we might start with one of yours. I've got one of yours in mind, like a piece of play. Which one? And we might, yeah. And we'll play it. And we'll play it on the video. It'll be something okay. that you'll be, you'll be okay with having. A look okay. At it. All right. Put it that way. Good. We might yeah. find a couple, but we we might play okay. it so people that you know, listening and watching, they'll be able to see this bit of play and then we might revisit it, replay it, yep. slow it down and just get your thoughts on the decision-making and the yep. circumstances of the game, the context of the sea, all of that stuff and just kind of yep. burrow in on those those sort of little moments yep. that can um, reshape a game or a, or a player's career, that sort of stuff. No, I like it. I love it. I think, like you said, there's a good... 
um, well, I mean, good opportunity within the lack of football that we're seeing at the minute to just, um, you know, I don't think, we're, you know, if it's not hard line analysis, but hopefully it can, you know, show some sort of insight, but also for yeah. the, the juniors and whatnot out there for the ones that potentially yeah. want to learn about different bits and pieces, the skill aspects of the game or just what goes through your head as a, as a footballer within those situations. I'm yeah. um, definitely keen to, to do some of that, mate. And I, I never mind seeing little highlights every now and again either. So um, that's fine. Completely fine. I'll, I'll try and dig into the archive and see if mm. I can come up with a couple of highlights of you. Um, so next, what we might do, instead of, instead of asking the fans for questions, Mm. We might we might sort of ask them for is there is there a is there a moment in the yeah. sort of modern era of bulldogs um, yep. games a yep. mark or a goal or a, just a, a bit a crucial bit of play that they they want to hear us discuss and then we'll yeah. uh, and dig into it how's that sound power to the people power to the people I love it um Bon great to see you um, albeit on a difficult week but nice to hear your voice. Um, Nice to know you're at the helm steering the ship, my friend. No worries, mate. Great to be back with you. Um, and to the people out there, keep take care of each other. Um, still important time, obviously, to keep supporting and isolating and keep doing your bit. you got to stay home. Oh, oh yes, already. yes, yes, yes. It's, has it skyrocketed <laughs> up, the, up the ratings? Surely, is it, it in the top 100 yet? It ain't final till it's vinyl. Um, I'll see you next week. See you then, mate. See you, man.